Hello guys, welcome to the class on estrogens. Let's move to the specific learning objectives. At the end of this class, you should be able to describe what is estrogen, what are the functions and classifications of estrogen. You should be able to describe the regulations and actions of estrogen. You should be able to explain the mechanism of action and pharmacokinetic properties of estrogen and the uses and adverse effects of estrogen. So next moving on to the sources of estrogen. So the major source of estrogen secretion is from ovary that is the estradiol is the major estrogen which is secreted from ovary. It can also be synthesized from cholesterol at graphene follicle, placenta and corpus luteum. Next coming to the estrogen classification, it can be classified into natural as well as synthetic. Natural we have estradiol, estron and estriol. So estradiol gets converted in the liver with the help of oxidation to estron and from estron with the help of hydroxylation it gets converted to estriol. So we have synthetic ones steroidal and non-steroidal. Steroidal you have ethinyl, lestradil, lestranol, ribonol and you have non-steroidal diethyl, stelbestrol, excestrol and dinestrol. So why we have to know about synthetic compounds? So already we know about natural one. The reason being the naturals are not inactive. They are not active orally. So when natural estrogens are administered orally, the, they are not active as such. The reason being it gets metabolized very rapidly in the liver and there will be shorter duration of action. So coming to the regulation of secretion of estrogen, normally in the menstruating woman, the daily secretion of the estrogen will be around 10 to 100 micrograms and in case of pregnancy at term it reaches to the maximum of 30 milligram per day and in the postmenopausal women it will vary from 2 to 10 microgram. So under the influence of FSH the graphene follicle will secrete the estrogen and there will be a modest pre-ovulatory FSH surge which will lead to increase in the estrogen concentration transiently and later corpus luteum will take the uh, responsibility of uh, secreting estrogen it will continue till two days before the menstruation so coming to the various actions which is produced by estrogen so on the reproductive organs they bring about pubertal changes with respect to uterus the growth of uterus, fallopian tube and vagina. Vaginal epithelium becomes thickened, stratified and cornified. There will also be proliferation of the endometrial cells. There will be contract, rhythmic contraction of the uterus as well as fallopian tube which helps in the fertile alkaline secretion which favors the sperm penetration. Apart from that, it also sensitizes the uterus to oxytocin. So in the presence of estrogen and in the absence of progesterone, if you withdraw the estrogen, it leads to menstruation. The estrogen, if estrogen is continued, menstruation is delayed and later there may be irregular breakthrough bleedings. So coming to the secondary sexual character, so pubertal changes with respect to the estrogen or it helps in growth of the breast, pubic as well as the axillary hair and brings about change in the body contour as well as the behavioral aspects and also it increases the acne formation in girls as similar to the acne formation in boys which occurs due to the androgen. 
So coming to the metabolic effects, it brings about anabolic changes. The anabolic changes is very weaker compared to the testosterone anabolic effect. And also the small amount of androgen in the girl also helps in the growth spurt. And these estrogen will help in epiphysian fusion both in girls as well as boys. Also it helps in the maintenance of the bone mass by reducing the bone resorption rate and increasing the bone matrix protein deposition. It also it raises the HDL LDL ratio thereby atherosclerosis risk will be rare in case of premenopausal women and also it induces nitric oxide synthase which releases nitric oxide and also the prostaglandin I2 will help in production of nitric oxide and lead to vasodilation. So coming to the other metabolic changes, it leads to edema due to wild water and salt retention. It can be overcome by giving diuretics. So the higher doses of estrogen as well as progesterone which is contained in the combined oral contraceptive pills can impair the glucose tolerance and it can precipitate diabetes. So these impaired glucose tolerance is very harmful only in case of diabetic individual. It also increases the blood coagulation by increasing the coagulation factors like 2, 7, 9 and 10 increase the risk of bleeding. It also increases the lithogenicity of bile by increasing the cholesterol secretion and decreasing the bile secretion. It can lead to gallstone formation. So coming to the mechanism of action of estrogen which is similar to that of the steroid. So estrogen binds to the specific nuclear receptor brings about dimerization and interacts with estrogen responsive element which brings about based on the gene transcription required it activates coactivator proteins or co-repressor proteins and brings about the specific gene transcription. Next estrogen can be distinctly categorized into two receptors estrogen receptor alpha and estrogen receptor beta so most of the organs contains both the estrogen receptors but these are the organs which predominates with these specific receptors. So uterus, vagina, breast, bone, hypothalamus and blood they have predominantly ER alpha receptors and prostate gland in males and ovary in females have predominantly ER beta receptors. So coming to the pharmacokinetic properties Natural estrogen, as I said in the earlier slide, is inactive orally. It cannot be given through oral route because it undergoes rapid metabolization and acts for very short duration of time. So estrogen esters uh, were uh, introduced, which can be administered through intramuscular route where they have low absorption and lead to prolonged action. So others we have estradiol, estron, and estriol. All these drugs, estradiol gets converted into estrone with the help of uh, liver, it undergoes oxidation in the liver. So, estradiol oxidizes to estrone, and estrone with the help of hydroxylation, it gets converted to estriol. And all these three estrogens gets conjugated and undergo sulfate conjugation, get excreted in urine and bile. All these drugs, estrogens, undergo intrahepatic circulation, thereby increasing the duration of action. Intrahepatic circulation because they undergo deconjugation in the intestine and they get reabsorbed back. So, among the estrogen, the synthetic one, the ethanol estradiol, is more potent and more active orally. And what are the preparations which are available? For estrogen, they are available in the form of tablets, depot injections, and vaginal cream. So, next coming to the uh, uses of estrogen, they are made utilized in the treatment of hormone replacement therapy, 
in case of senile vaginitis, in case of delayed puberty in girls, in treating dysmenorrhea, in treating acne, also in treating DUV that is dysfunctional uterine bleeding and also to treat carcinoma of prostate. So coming to the estrogen dose dependent adverse effects, for long term administration it can lead to gynecomastia, decreased libido, feminization in case of males, epiphyseal fusion can lead to short stature in the males as well as females, irregular bleeding can occur as well as endometrial carcinoma risk will be present in the postmenopausal women. So it can accelerate the breast carcinoma cell growth. It can also lead to gallstones and also it can lead to hepatoma formation and worsens the conditions like migraine, epilepsy and endometriosis. And uh, the females who are on stilbestrol during pregnancy can cause vaginal and cervical cancer among female offsprings. Thank you.